Hi, everybody. Welcome to Mark's Backyard Birds. Tonight's topic, hawks and bird feeders. Oh, I this question I have for 40 years <laughs> been answering and explaining and thought, you know, I, I've gotten two or three calls this week and, and I thought, my gosh, I don't think I've ever done that program. So here we go. Um, can hawks impact your bird feeders and to what degree uh, do they impact them? And what are some of the things that you can do to make a difference? Okay, here we go. Yes and no. Uh, uh, yes, a hawk can impact your bird feeders, but not nearly to the degree that most people think. Um, first off, let's talk about a couple of different kind of hawks that are out there. Uh, the, the, the main types um, this is the classic red tail hawk. This is an immature bird. That's why he doesn't have a red tail. He's got stripes in his tail because he's young. But these are the classic roadside hawks, the birds that you see sitting on power poles and power lines. And um, they're the classic chicken hawk, if you will, from farmers. Um, that, but the truth of the matter is these birds do not hunt birds. The, it, it, oh, wait, 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 Mark. Chicken's a bird, but well, I'm sorry, but chickens don't act like birds. Uh, the the red tail hawks, the larger hawks known as budios, uh, are more hunters of uh, rabbits and mice and rats, uh, things like that, and they are, or snakes even. Um, but they are not built with the, the maneuverability uh, abilities to chase birds around. Chickens just walk on the ground like a rabbit, and they're easy prey for uh, a predator of, of all kinds, and, and red tail hawks are one of those. But when you see these around in your yard or your neighborhood, yes, your tiny little uh, Yorkshire Terrier may not be safe because that's the type of prey they're looking for is mammals and slow-moving uh, critters on the ground, but your birds are. Um, uh, and Remember, I've said this so many times, you never say never and you never say always when you're talking about wild animals. And so somebody is going to make a comment, say, well, I saw a red tail hawk one time catching a enter whatever bird. It is a rare occurrence, but I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying that it can't be. And, and I'm also not saying that your birds at your feeders won't be leery of a red tail hawk when they cast that big shadow as they fly over or if they do land in your yard and they're looking at your squirrels. The birds have to be careful. I mean, the same way they're careful of larger birds, period, like crows. And, and I've seen them flush because of larger woodpeckers because it's a it's a tough world out there and birds have to be uh, cautious and they have to fly away when they think there's a, a you know, danger near another in that same group are the red shouldered hawks. These are becoming more in common in backyards as, uh, as going North. They've always been a common Southern hawk, but they're, they've definitely been moving North. Um, but these birds mainly eat snakes and lizards and frogs and slow fish in a, in a Creek or, uh, you know, they, they, I, they can't, can they take a bird? Yes, but they rarely do. And bird, most birds are not even scared of them. I've seen them sitting at a right outside of a bird feeder station and the bird's just feeding and, and, and not worried about it. Now, they fly away when he first comes in. Yes, they, they, they have to be cautious at first, but then they realize they don't pose any threat. I've also seen them snatch baby birds, um, you know, out of a nest, which is Again, that's not chasing a bird down and, and uh, the birds at your bird feeders. That is a, a vulnerable species, and, and most predators will take advantage of an easy meal like that. Um, so, But at your bird feeder stations, these guys don't really pose a threat like the red-tailed hawk does. Now, the other kinds of hawks that are out there in the world are the occipiters. And, and these are bird eating hawks. And I love this picture for many reasons, not because he's eating a bird in the picture, but I, it, it, I think the most important things it shows in this picture is how long that tail is compared to the other hawks. The tail is the rudder on a bird. And the tail is what enables a, 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 a a bird to turn quickly. So this bird, the Cooper's hawk, uh, is built for chasing other birds. Uh, they are the bird-eating hawks, and they they are a danger to take a bird from your bird feeders. Um, I my, my house lived in for the last fifteen years. I had Cooper's hawks uh, visit my backyard every day. Did it really affect my bird populations? Absolutely not. 
the birds know that he's that bird's not going to be there all the time. And what attracts them are the number of birds at a bird feeder station, a predator, just like the lions at the water hole in the Serengeti, whenever the food is gathered in an area that attracts predators. Well, predators miss far more than they catch. And so the Cooper's hawks come buzzing through my backyard they, they for years and years, and occasionally they would catch a bird. Morning doves are the easiest. They're the slowest and the heaviest and the slowest to take off. So Cooper's hawk really do take uh, uh, morning doves and things. But they'll take other birds as well. But they count on that surprise attack. Um, and they're and they're built for it. Those those long tails. And they have a little bit shorter wings for zipping and uh, zipping through the woodlands and things. Um, their cousin, the sharp shin hawk. Um, it is very much built the same way. Now, they're not as big as a Cooper's hawk. Uh, matter of fact, a male uh, shark shin hawk is not much bigger than uh, a blue jay. Um, but they are uh, capable of catching uh, uh, small birds uh, at your bird feeder as well as because they do it all the time in the wild. Now, and then it, uh, I'll put my last one up here real quick, uh, which is not actually a hawk. It's actually a falcon. This is the American kestrel. We used to call them sparrow hawks many years ago. Um, they are not as common at hunting at bird feeders, but they do. And they will occasionally catch one. But these birds eat insects more than they do anything else. So um, so the truth, the truth about the, these hawks that may visit your bird feeders is they will occasionally catch a hawk, but they're not going to cause your birds to disappear. Now, if you have one nesting right above your bird feeder station and they're going to be there for months and months, that may be a different story, but that's really rare for that to happen as well. But just because they come uh, visiting your feeders every once in a while, birds are used to hawks. Remember that. Birds uh, have dealt with hawks for a millennia. They, they, they know how to evade them. They know that uh, you know, they see their, their silhouettes, they see them shadows. And, uh, and what we were talking the other day about them is adult hawks, like, the, like that picture of that Cooper's hawk. And uh, they, these, those guys are very smart and they are very much ambush predators. Whereas the younger hawks uh, don't know as well and they sit out in the open and the birds can see them and they don't worry about them. Remember those little birds do have an advantage on them and with, usually with speed and with maneuverability. But what can you do to increase your bird's chances? If your bird feeder stations are out in the middle of the, in, in around with nowhere, no vegetation around them, they're more vulnerable to avian predators. So placing your bird feeders near cover now, uh, if you, in, you know, in my yard, I've got trees really, really close to my bird feeder station. So I've got lots of cover for them to escape to. And that gives them confidence. And it makes that hawk's job a whole lot harder to try to catch those birds at your bird feeder station. So if, uh, and this is a program I did a few years back about brush piles. And this is Carrie's old yard where her yard was wide open, where her bird feeder stations were. So she built a brush pile uh, for escape cover for those birds. And they truly, truly used it. It made a huge difference in her yard and the, the birds that she was able to attract because it gives them confidence that they can escape a predator. And for avian predators that, that may visit your yard on occasion, uh, being your feeders being close to cover is really, really important. Now, my one caveat to that and placing your, your, your birds near cover is, of course, the other truly major predator on uh, songbirds, and that are house cats or feral cats that roam free. If you have a, a brush, your, your bird feeders near cover, then the cats will learn to hide under the cover and ambush the birds as they get close under your feeders and things. So that's where you have to have a happy medium because you got to protect against the major predator. And in this case, cats are far more dangerous and kill far more birds every year than, than uh, hawks do in your backyard. So uh, protect against them. Another thing that you can do, of course, is attract blue jays. Blue jays are the burglar alarms of the forest. And yes, some bird, whenever a blue jay flies into a bird feeders, you'll see a little smaller bird fly away. But generally, they come right back. And that is because they, they really don't fear the blue jays as, as much because blue jays don't catch uh, birds 
uh, like a hawk does. Uh, and in fact, they, you know, they when they hear or see or, or catch that there's a hawk in the area, the blue jays go crazy. You hear that, J, 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 and they're usually in small family groups, you know, five or six blue jays at a time, and they will, what is called, mob those hawks that come into your yard. So that's one of the reasons I love putting out in-shell peanuts for my blue jays, because I love having them in my yard because they're the burglar alarms. And when that Cooper's hawk would come around, they, the blue jays would gang up on him and, and tend to moving along. Now, so I, you know, blue jays are one of your anti best anti-hawk policies. So another thing that you, a real danger with hawks and a trick that they've actually get used to, and that is flushing your birds off your feeders into windows. Um, that's why I like, and this is my old setup, placing my bird feeders close to windows. Uh, because the bird, if they do get flushed by a hawk, um, this very feeder set up is the, where that Cooper's hawk used to hunt all the time. And if he flushed them, the birds, especially my goldfinches, would fly and some of them would bang the window, but they would bounce right off because they didn't have enough speed up to hit the windows with any any force. So they would just bounce off those windows and keep flying away. So placement of your bird feeders can also play into uh, the window strike. Now, if you, they're further out, uh, it's not as big a deal. It depends on you know where your best visibility is and where you place your feeders. All that kind of comes into play. But that it is important to protect your birds and cover is the key. Cover, giving those birds escape cover so they know they can fly into bushes or shrubs or trees uh, and quickly get away. Remember, a, a predator can't hunt prey to extinction. It's, I mean, it's a basic rule of predator-prey relationships we learned in college, of course, and that is when birds disappear from a bird feeder, that predator is going to go. He can't stick around and wait and wait and wait and wait. They're going to move on to the hunting grounds and your birds are going to come back. That's just how it works. Um, and so uh, if you're patient and you, you you do what you can, people ask, can I, oh, I wish I could do something to that hawk. You can't hurt them. They're federally protected. You don't, you shouldn't protect them because they're, they're, they're taking out, you know, other pests and things in the environment. It's so important. But if you want to harass him, if you want to bang on your windows, if you want to uh, yell at them, if when you see him out there in your briefcase, that's fine. But you can't do anything to hurt that, that, that shark shin hawker, that cooper hawker, that red tail hawk. I had a friend that used to throw ice cubes at him when she saw him. Uh, whenever she'd go by the machine, their ice Spencer, grab an ice cube and open the window and throw at them. So, um, yes, you can you can encourage them to move on because, you know, it tugs at our heartstrings when a, a bird you know, gets killed, especially one of our favorites. But it is part of nature. House cats are not. Window strikes are not. So uh, birds know how to deal with hawks. Yeah, they're not going to drive all the birds away from your bird feeder. So. Great idea for a program. I can't believe I hadn't covered that, you know, in a program till this point. So great idea for it. Thanks for sending that in. Give us a like. Give us a share. If you're on YouTube, please subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you'll know when I'm on next. Till then, come on. Let's talk birds.